Hi friends, I'm Ms. Holly. I'm so happy you've joined me for Sunday School today for our lesson in our unit, He's Here, Jesus's Life Among Us. Here's a list of supplies you'll need today. Your canvas, your red heart, pink and red bottles of paint, the sponges, a small plate or a bowl to put your paint in, tape, wooden heart, glue, and your Jesus's life among us grid and crayons and some newspaper or something to cover your work area. So if you don't have those supplies, now would be a good time to pause the video to go and gather your supplies. So let's say our opening prayer together. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for the greatest gift of all, Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Help us share the gift of joy, the gift of peace, and the gift of love with everyone we meet. Amen. Now we're going to open today with a scavenger hunt. So there's one item we're going to find in this scavenger hunt. So if you can go and find this item and come back, pause your video while you're gone and come back, and then you can see the item I found. So go and find something that is love. And here's the item that I have, a picture of my family because my family is love to me. So today we're going to talk about our Bible story from Jesus's early ministry. You know, we've been following along in Jesus's life and now his ministry is getting started and the word is spreading about Jesus and he's starting to have a following of people everywhere he goes. He started preaching to people and healing them, and large crowds follow him to hear what he has to say. So let's listen to our Bible story. It is found in Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 through 25. I'm going to read to you from the Children's Storybook Bible. Jesus enjoyed teaching and healing. People everywhere heard that Jesus was a healer. They brought their sick family and friends to Jesus so he could heal them. When Jesus was near sick people, he could have gotten sick too, but Jesus didn't get sick. Instead, Jesus healed the people. He went out of his way to help. Early one morning, Jesus went to his friend Simon Peter's house. Simon Peter was very upset. Jesus, my wife's mother has a terrible fever. I know you have healed people in many places. Would you heal her too? Jesus could feel how sad his friend was. He knelt down next to the woman. He held her hand and healed her. Jesus and his friends kept going from town to town, healing others and teaching people about God's love. So the large crowds gather to hear Jesus everywhere he goes. They're curious and they're hopeful and they're amazed at the things that they've heard that he does. And then when they come and they see these things with their own eyes, they've heard stories about it. So they bring people who need healing. They bring people who are blind, people who are sick people who can't walk, and Jesus is able to heal them all. And they gather to listen to his teachings, and they're amazed when the, Jesus tells them that the kingdom of God belongs to them. Jesus was sent to earth to heal, to preach, teach, love, to care, and to show how much God loves us all. Jesus came to tell everyone about the power of God's love. On Valentine's Day every year, people show their love for others with cards, maybe some candy, some flowers. It's a special day that we all try to be really mindful 
and tell others how much we love them. But there's somebody who is very special and shows us his love each and every day. Can you guess who I'm talking about? Well, if you said God, you were right. Because God tells us he loves us in the Bible. The Bible is kind of like a love letter that God has written to us. It teaches us what love looks like, and it teaches us how we should act whenever we love others. So we're going to look at some passages from the Bible that tell us about God's love for us. But first, I want to teach you some signs from American Sign Language. The first sign is the sign for God. So with that sign, you make a motion. You take your hand and with your thumb facing you, you just swipe your hand down in front of your face one time like this. That's the sign for God. Now, the next one is the sign for love. Make fists and cross them in front of your shoulders like that. That's the sign for love. Okay, so God and love. All right, now I'm going to read the verses that I was telling you about in the Bible. They'll be on the screen. So listen carefully. And when you hear the words God and you hear the word love, make the sign for them. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. 1 John 4, chapter 8. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. 1 John 4, verse 9. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. 1 John 4, verse 10. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. 1 John 4, verse 12. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. 1 John 4, 16. We love because he, God, first loved us. 1 John 4, 19. Now, since it's Valentine's Day, I want to share with you one of my favorite stories about the power of love. Hello, I'm Hector Elizondo. You're watching Storyline Online, brought to you by the Screen Actors Guild Foundation and Book Pals. Today I'll be reading something special, a very special story and a favorite of my granddaughter, when she was smaller, of course. Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch, is the story today. And it's written by Eileen Spinelli, illustrated by Paul Yellowitz. Get ready. This is a gooder. Mr. Hatch was tall and thin, and he did not smile. Every morning at 6.30 sharp, he would leave his brick house and walk eight blocks to the shoelace factory where he worked. At lunchtime, he would sit alone in a corner, eat his cheese and mustard sandwich, and drink a cup of coffee. Sometimes, he brought a prune for dessert. After work, he would make two stops. At the newsstand to get the paper, and at the grocery store to buy a fresh turkey wing for his supper. After supper, he read the paper, took a shower, and went to bed early. He keeps to himself. That is what everyone said about Mr. Hatch. Well, one Saturday, when Mr. Hatch stepped onto the porch with his dustpan and broom, he got a surprise. 
a package wrapped in brown paper. He had never spoken to the postman before. Thank you, Mr. Goober, he said. Mr. Goober smiled. You're welcome. I always enjoy delivering packages. Mr. Hatch tore the brown paper off. Inside was a white box, which he opened to find another box. This one was heart-shaped, all satiny red with pink bow on top. It was filled with candy. Something fluttered to the porch floor. It was a little white card. He picked it up and it said, Somebody loves you. Only then did he remember that this was Valentine's Day. Oh, Mr. Hatch wondered and wondered now who would send this to me. He was all alone. He had no friends. And yet someone, someone had sent him a Valentine. Who? Who? He put the box on the coffee table and tried to do some dusting. But every time he left the room, he had to keep peeking to see if the box was still there. He dusted and dusted, and, and the dust cloth seemed to whisper, Somebody loves you. Somebody loves you. At last, he flung the dust cloth away and exclaimed, I've got a secret admirer. And then he did something he had never done before. He laughed. Yeah. He laughed and danced and clapped his hands. And then he took a piece of candy from the box and ate it. Mr. Hatch changed his shirt and found some old aftershave in the bottom drawer. He splashed it on his face. He picked out a, a yellow tie with blue polka dots and put it on. And then he went for a walk. Maybe, he thought, I will meet the person who sent me the candy. Of course, no one had ever seen Mr. Hatch wearing a tie or smelling of aftershave or, or smiling. So he got a lot of attention. Mrs. Weed tripped over her dog, and Mr. Dunwoody nearly fell off his ladder, and little Tina Finn spilled all the toys out of her wagon. Mr. Hatch waved hello to them all. On Monday, it was back to work. At lunchtime, Mr. Hatch sat in the middle of the cafeteria. He spoke to everyone and passed out chocolates from his heart box. On the way home, as usual, he stopped at the newsstand. Mr. Smith handed him the usual newspaper, I think I'll have a pack of mints, said Mr. Hatch. Not as usual. Mr. Smith was shocked. Was that you speaking, Mr. Hatch? Indeed it was, said Mr. Hatch. I said I would also like a pack of mints. And if you don't mind my saying so, Mr. Smith, you don't look very well today. Mr. Smith recovered from his shock to reply, You're right. I, I, I don't know. I don't feel very well. I have, a, I have a cold. and I was supposed to go to the doctor's this afternoon, but the stand has been so busy I haven't had the time. Mr. Hatch smiled. Why, I'd be happy to watch the stand for you while you go. Mr. Smith could hardly believe his ears. You would? Certainly. Just, just show me what to do. And so Mr. Hatch ran the newsstand for an hour. He wondered if any of the women who stopped to buy a paper or a magazine or a candy bar had sent him the mysterious valentine. So when Mr. Mr. Smith returned, Mr. Hatch made his usual stop at the grocery store. I'm a little tired of turkey wings, he told Mr. Todd. I think I'll have a nice fresh slice of ham. Mr. Todd weighed the meat and wrapped it. You look worried, said Mr. Hatch. I am, said Mr. Todd. My little girl is late and she hasn't come home from school yet and I can't leave the store to look for her until my wife arrives. And goodness, why didn't you say so, said Mr. Hatch. I will go look for her. And so he walked to school and found little Melanie Todd by the swings and brought her home. Thank you. Thank you, said the grocer. Any time, said Mr. Hatch. After supper, Mr. Hatch did not bother to read the paper. No, no. He decided to bake brownies instead. Mm-hmm. It would be nice to have brownies to share the next day with the people at the shoelace factory. And as he baked, the warm chocolate smell of brownies floated through the neighborhood, and children gathered round Mr. Hatch's house, sniffing the air. Well, 
I suppose the factory can wait, said Mr. Hatch as he looked out the window and he brought out two platefuls. Now, what are brownies without lemonade, he said, and he stirred up a nice cold pitcher. When the parents came to gather their children, they had some brownies too. It turned out to be a picnic in Mr. Hatch's backyard. He dusted off an old harmonica and played songs he remembered from his boyhood. Everyone danced. And so the days and weeks went by. When Mr. Hatch wasn't smiling, he, he was laughing. And when he wasn't laughing, he was helping someone. And when he wasn't helping someone, he was having a party in his yard or on his porch. He seemed to have forgotten about finding the person who sent him to Valentine. And then one afternoon, Mr. Goober, the postman, came to his door. His face was very serious. Come in, Mr. Goober, said Mr. Hatch. You look upset. I am upset. I, I made a mistake some time ago. My supervisor is very angry with me. Do you, do you, uh, yes, Mr. Goober, what is it? Do you recall the package I delivered to you on Valentine's Day, I think it was? Yes, I believe so, replied Mr. Hatch, beginning to feel a little uneasy. I don't suppose you still have it, eh? said Mr. Goober, sadly. As a matter of fact, said Mr. Hatch, I, I still have the box. The candy is gone, though. Why do you ask? The postman took a deep breath. I'm afraid I delivered it to the wrong address. I was supposed to go to another house. Mr. Hatch recalled tearing off the brown paper. It had never occurred to him to look at the address. Well, he fetched the heart-shaped box and the pink bow and gave them to the postman. I do hope your supervisor won't be too angry with you now. The postman was heading down the sidewalk when Mr. Hatch called from his porch. Mr. Goober, I forgot something. He gave the postman the little white card. Somebody loves you, it said. Alone in his living room, Mr. Hatch sighed. Nobody loved me after all. Then he read the paper, took a shower, and went to bed early. The next morning at 6.30 sharp, Mr. Hatch left his brick house and walked eight blocks to the shoelace factory. At lunchtime, he sat in the corner by himself, ate his cheese and mustard sandwich, and drank a cup of coffee. After work, he stopped at the newsstand for his paper, but he did not speak to Mr. Smith. No. And when he ordered his turkey wing from Mr. Todd, he did not smile. Nor did he pat little Melanie Todd on the head, or bake brownies, or have picnics or parties, or play his old harmonica anymore. Everyone whispered, what is wrong with Mr. Hatch? Mr. Goober, the postman, told him, we love Mr. Hatch, insisted Mr. and Mrs. Dunwoody. He gave us flowers for our garden. He helped to mend our back fence. Mrs. Weed nodded. I love him, too. He saved his bones for my dog, Ruffy. Ruffy barked. She loved Mr. Hatch, too. Mr. Smith told everyone how Mr. Hatch had watched his newsstand so he could visit the doctor, and Mr. Todd told everyone how Mr. Hatch had found his little girl. All the children in the neighborhood remember Mr. Hatch's wonderful brownies and lemonade. And most of all, his laughter. Poor Mr. Hatch, they said. What can we do? Then Mr. Goober announced, I have an idea. On Saturday morning, Mr. Hatch woke to a bright and sunny day. He put on his old overalls and went out to the porch with his dustpan and broom. He couldn't believe his eyes. All over the porch were red and white hearts and pink bows. There were boxes of candy on the chairs and yellow streamers flowing from the ceiling and sticking up out of his mailbox was a shining silver harmonica. The front yard was filled with people, happy, smiling people. They were holding up a huge sign with hand-painted letters. It said, Everybody Loves Mr. Hatch. Mr. Hatch dabbed at a tear with his handkerchief. I do believe, he sniffed, 
Somebody loves me after all. And then he smiled. And then he laughed. And then he hurried down to be with his friends. Isn't that a great story about the power of love and how love changed Mr. Hatch's life? Well, you know, there's somebody that always loves us as we talked about, God and Jesus. And here's a song that tells us about how much Jesus loves us. I can be loud or quiet, tall or itty bitty. I might live on a farm or in the city. And Jesus is always gonna love me. Jesus loves me. And Jesus is always gonna love me Jesus Today we have two things. We have a special Valentine's craft and then we have our pictogram craft that we work on every week. So I'm going to go ahead now and explain both crafts to you and then you can get started on whichever one you want to do first. So for the Valentine's craft you'll need your canvas, the pink and red bottles of paint, the sponges, something to put the paint in, and the red construction paper heart. So what we're going to do for this craft is you're going to use the sponges and you're going to sponge paint. You have one sponge for each color, one for red and one for pink, and you're gonna sponge paint on the canvas. But what you have a choice is how you want it to look at the end. If you want it to look like the white heart, then you'll follow the instructions for taping the red heart on that I'm going to show you in just a minute. But if you want it to look like the one with the red heart, then you won't tape your heart on until the very end. So here's what you would do if you wanted to have a white heart. The first thing you would do is you would use your tape, put it on the back of the heart, and then tape it on to the center of your canvas. You know, we've done this before. This is an art technique called masking, where you cover up an area that's revealed at the end. So then you would take your paint and you would sponge paint all around, covering your whole canvas. You can even get it on the hard, it doesn't matter, but you can use the pink and the red and cover everything all the way. And then that's how it would look at the end before you would take the heart off to reveal the white space underneath to reveal a white heart. So if you decide you want your heart to be red instead of white, just go ahead and paint your whole canvas with the sponge. 
just like that. And then at the end, you can, when it dries, you can either glue or tape your heart down in the center of the canvas like that. See, and then it, it kind of pops the red heart. So again, there's what the two different options, if you wanna have a white heart or if you wanna have a red heart, it's up to you. Now, the next thing we have is our symbol for today. And our pictogram symbol from today's story is a heart to remind us of God's love and how Jesus came to earth to share that love with us. For this craft, you can use the paint, the red or the pink that you already have out. And then while your um, paint on your heart is drying, you can decide how you want to color your background square on your pictogram, any color that you want to. And then once the paint on your heart is dry and you've decorated the background square, you can glue the heart in the square that says Matthew chapter four, verses 23 through 25. I know this is gonna take you some time to do both of your crafts today, but let's go ahead now and say our closing prayer and then you can continue working. Will you pray with me? Dear God, help us to understand the power of your love. Help us share your love with those around us. Thank you for loving us so much that you gave us the gift of Jesus. We love you, God. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me for Sunday School today. And this week, remember that the power of love is great and that we should share God's love with everyone. And be sure and tell your family how much you love them. Happy Valentine's Day. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.